World of Warcraft is filled with weird, creepy, and unsettling things at times all around the world. And Burning Crusade is no exception to that. With the game about to re-release very soon, I figured I'd go over some creepy things that Outland has to offer. We will also go back to Classic to spook you out a little if you're thinking about leveling a Draenei or Blood Elf from scratch. So buckle up, we're gonna go over 8 creepy things around World of Warcraft Classic and Burning Crusade. Let's get into it. Let's start with Hellfire Peninsula. This place has a bunch of scary and unsettling things to offer, but you can't talk about scary things in Hellfire Peninsula without mentioning the infamous Fell Reaver. If you always wondered what this thing is and why it's here and why it always seems to catch you by surprise even though it's gigantic, well, let's go over some of the lore of the Fell Reaver to understand why. There's actually a whole lot of Fell Reavers around Outland, even in Sunwell Plateau. Those constructs are made by the Mogarg engineers of the Burning Legion. Their purpose is mainly to destroy large fortified structures, but also for reconnaissance reasons as the one you encounter in Hellfire Peninsula. The reason why those are so sneaky even with their size is because they have been specifically designed for this reason. They are very fast thanks to their long legs and they're powered by a fell fire core. Probably some sort of infernal score. But if you get ganked at some point by this construct while leveling in Hellfire Peninsula, take solace in the fact that you will have your revenge once you're level 70, as the quest chain to get the key to Shattered Halls has you kill the fell reaver to heat up the key mold for the last quest hotter than hell. Let's stay in Hellfire Peninsula and talk about the Path of Glory. This road has been paved thousands of years ago and has served as the main ley line between Hellfire Citadel and the Stairs of Destiny and the Dark Portal. The Felhort trampled this path long ago with thousands of soldiers under Gul'dan's command, traversed the Dark Portal and the rest is history. But upon further inspection, you may notice that the Path of Glory is entirely paved in bones. This is no coincidence. Those bones belong to the Draenei that fell victim to the Horde before the events of the Dark Portal. Over 90% of the Draenei's population got decimated by the Horde, and this road is the most extant example of the Orcs genocide on the Draenei. And now, you and I get to walk on the bones of thousands of fallen Draenei. There's even a quest that you get early on in Hellfire Peninsula that has you come here to cleanse some trampled skeletons with holy water. And that quest describes exactly exactly what has taken place in the Path of Glory long ago. Let's now move on to Nagrand. At the northernmost part of Nagrand, above the mountains and right at the border between the Zone and Zengar Marsh, you will find a small hidden village accessible only by flying mounts. Once you get closer, you'll be greeted by two children and a sign saying Chael's home for little tykes. Inside the village, you'll find all kinds of small toys and even a playground. But then you get to speak with the person in charge of this place, a troll female named Chal. She doesn't say or do anything special to you other than to tell you to shut up because the babies are sleeping. Upon further inspection, you'll start to notice some really odd things around this place. First, there's this cluster of rockets on a cart at the sandbox. Then, there's this child looking like he's hiding inside what appears to be a giant skeleton of some sort. If you go further north, you'll also see a doghouse with a cluster of meat and bones inside and a huge mace laying on the doghouse. Then, there's that giant carousel near Chal going at full speed with four torrent babies hanging from it, flying awfully close to what appears to be a boiling hot cauldron. And then, what gives it away is, if you go behind the house, you'll find three cages, one of which has a skeletal remain inside of it, clearly looking like they belong to a child. We get to learn more about Charles' lore many years later during a Worlds of Draenor quest in the Grand, where we learn that Chal is actually a shapeshifter witch of some sorts, that managed to gain immortality by devouring and consuming her victims. One theory is that in Burning Crusade in the Grand, Chal keeps staying alive by stealing young babies and eating them. A truly gruesome and creepy character. 
Let's now move on to Azeroth, to the first raid you'll probably get to experience, Karazhan. Now, Karazhan itself is filled with really weird and creepy things all around the tower, but today we're gonna be staying outside the tower. On the outskirts of Karazhan, you'll find a small entrance leading to what appears to be a crypt. The door to that crypt is locked, but you can manage to go through by deleting your hearthstone and hitting unstuck, or by pulling the mobs outside and dying. Then you can get through the gate on ghost form and resurrect on the other side. The Karazhan crypts are a gigantic network of tunnels leading to different rooms more creepier one after the other. This place appears to have been designed with the intent to host some bosses and an actual raid, but probably the number one most creepy place around here is the underwater upside down sinners room. Once you dive in this large pool, you'll quickly find a bunch of dead bodies hanging upside down from their feet or necks. Some of them are attached to sinking boulders and some of them are attached from the ceiling. Probably a room where the mad mage Medivh took his opponents and disloyal servants to dispose of them in the most gruesome of ways. We get to learn from the developer which made this place himself, John Stats, that the Karazhan Crypts was made as a side project that he was working on on his off hours. It wasn't confirmed that it would have been a raid or an extension to Karazhan or anything, he was just having fun at the map creator for this place. We also learned from him that this particular upside down sinner's room got him into a lot of trouble with higher ups at Blizzard, as they wanted to ship the game to China and Chinese officials found the dead corpses is hanging upside down underwater in the game files. His boss was really not happy about this. It could have led to WoW never being shipped to China. Let's now move further east towards Duskwood. Every now and then, while questing, you'll hear the town crier shouting about the Abomination Stitches being on its way to Duskwood. This enormous creature is a level 35 elite mob that you really don't want to stumble upon if you're questing. He's kind of the fell reaver of Duskwood in a way. But what makes Stitches creepy is his lore. While questing in Duskwood, you'll learn about Abercrombie, an alchemist that was driven mad after the death of his wife, but adventurers are unsuspecting of Abercrombie's madness and willingly help him in Duskwood to summon Stitches. Every time someone turns in the last quest of Abercrombie, Stitches is spawned at Ravenhill and tramples the road to Darkshire, destroying anyone who gets on his way. Next up, right across the river, you'll get to Westfall, and while leveling in Westfall, you'll find a bunch of Knoll camps. Nothing special you might think, but upon further inspection, after clearing a camp of Knolls, you may or may not notice their tents. Ever wondered what happened to the bodies of low-level adventurers after they fell victim to the Knolls? That's right, they're used to make them tents apparently, and who knows what else that we don't know about. Obviously, no camps are not only found in Westfall, but all over the world. So while leveling your Draenei or Blood Elf in classic TBC, if you ever stumble upon a quest that asks you to clear a camp of gnolls or bringing X amount of their colored bracers, you might think twice before getting killed by them, as your skin might serve as their tents and your face as decoration. Let's leave Westfall and go to Elwyn now. If you're a morning person, every time at 7 a.m. server time, six human children spawn at the house behind Goldshire and start running all the way to the Valley of Heroes in Stormwind City, then to Goldshire and then to Northshire Abbey, and then back to their house where they will go up the stairs and form a pentagram formation and just stay there until it's 8 a.m. During that time, the ambient music in the house will change to a more creepy and loomy atmosphere and you'll start to hear all kinds of things, like a banshee scream, a ghoul call, or even Cthune saying You will die. It has long been theorized that those children are actually servants of the old god Cthune and are controlled by him to spy on the denizens of Stormwind. The truth is different, however. We learn from John Stats again that those children are actually references to Blizzard employees in the dungeon department. They were added by the exterior level design employees, which the dungeon department entertained a friendly rivalry with. John Stats also reveals that the fact that the children form a pentagram was not meant to be a satanic reference, but it's just a function of them being centered around Cameron, the child in the middle. You'll find that the Stormwind Orphanage children also do that at times. But with that, this brings an end to this video. 
I had a lot of fun making this one and I'm eager to see what you guys think of it. I hope that I managed to spook you out a little bit and that you'll think twice now while leveling before walking on the path of glory or attacking a null camp in Azeroth. If you liked this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to the Classic WoW Gaming Curios channel for more content like this. With that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.